hi hello and welcome so uh, in this video we will see how we can retrieve data from sanity io uh, in vanilla js project so over here you can see this is my sanity studio open uh, and these are the schemas uh, we can see we have product and it has some pre-filled data and uh, similarly we have vendor uh, again it has some data and category so this is just a sample project that I have created uh, uh, using that e-commerce uh, option when we set up Sanity IO using Sanity in it. Okay, so uh, the data is there. Uh, we will see how we can retrieve it. But uh, just before uh, uh, jumping into the Vanilla JS project, I'll quickly go into the vision section and. Uh, uh, I'll just go over how we can write a quick query and uh, the same query we will use uh, in the uh, in our project in the JavaScript project to retrieve the data so you can see this is the data set production and we will stick to this version uh, API version and uh, we will uh, write a query here uh, the grok query which is uh, which is uh, the sanity uh, has provided us so over here uh, we'll be querying from all the uh, documents so uh, we'll say underscore type equals uh, the name of the schema so uh, one of our schema is product so uh, let's query it so once we fetch we'll see uh, all the data that is there in this uh, schema uh, it is uh, or in this document it is being uh, sent back so what we want is uh, let's uh, just return the price for this product and uh, what else we can return yeah title let's return the title and uh, the price so we'll say title and uh, the price will be default uh, product variant and it's price so you can see this is very similar to uh, GraphQL how we write uh, queries in GraphQL so now if we hit fetch so we have the title for each product and we have a price so this is the query that we will use uh, when we integrate with our uh, when we try to fetch uh, from Sanity IO, this is the query that we will run from our vanilla JavaScript project. And the last thing to point out here is this is the URL uh, when we hit fetch. So this URL is built on its own. So uh, the first part, uh, I'll break this down when, once we write the uh, URL uh, once we build the URL in the JavaScript project okay so now let me quickly switch to the uh, JavaScript project I have built a very simple HTML template over here you can see uh, it has nothing much uh, it's just that uh, h1 tag with products and pricing a span tag for loading it's just a text and then an unordered list now in this list we will be are displaying all the products and with their price and all the JavaScript will write inside the script tag now before uh, starting there is one last thing we have to do uh, now over here we will be making a fetch call a fetch API we will use to uh, retrieve data from sanity IO so this is a browser now uh, and it's in a different domain now now uh, and our sanity io uh, studio it's in different domain so what we should do is that uh, i mean we'll get into the course issue so uh, what we have to do is we have to just copy this url and sanity io provides us uh, a ui to add exceptions uh, for course so over here uh, what we can do is we can go to sanity io slash manage so once you go it will list down all the projects that uh, you have so this is our project uh, the boots project now in this uh, we have to go to the API section 
and the APA section we can add course origin just paste uh, the code sandbox URL and click on save we don't need credentials because we will not be sending any credentials so now this is added similarly you can see this uh, localhost 3333 this is for the uh, sanity studio so which is already added when we uh, initialize the project and other things to note that we'll use here is the project ID and the data sets that we have it is of production so we will be retrieving from this project and this data set once we start writing the javascript so let's uh, start uh, the javascript part so uh, we'll first note down the uh, we'll first uh, create uh, the we'll first capture the project id so the project id we already saw so we'll create a variable project id and uh, we can get it from here in the sanity io manage we'll just go and paste so this is the project id uh, next is uh, uh, the data set okay. so uh, we just saw the if we go to the manager so in the data sets we have only production so we'll it, it depends if you have multiple data sets whichever data set uh, you want you have to write the name so uh, we have only one so this is production uh, next is uh, the query what kind of uh, query whatever we will write here will go as a query parameter in the get URL uh, in the URL uh, we it get of course whatever we are using so over here we will be using get so <coughs> so we will just write uh, query and uh, the query is something that we just wrote in the vision tab so we will be using exactly same query uh, yeah so over here uh, I will just paste it so uh, we can uh, we can use this uh, like directly we can keep it uh, as a string and we can but uh, in order for the server to interpret it correctly we should never uh, really send uh, a raw query like this as a query parameter we should always uh, wrap it around the uh, encode uri component so in this way what uh, this will do is uh, is it will uh, convert all the special characters or spaces into utf string so which will be very easily understandable on the server side and it will not create any you know, give any unexpected or results or errors so fine so we have uh, everything that we want the only thing is now we want to build the url uh, the url that we will be calling uh, to fetch the data so one easy way to do it is just go to uh, sanity studio and then if you have uh, this url over here you can just copy it and you can just paste it now over here we have to replace you can see this is a project id so we'll just uh, replace this with uh, project ID yeah. okay uh, next over here if you come back in it is API sanity IO this is the same version data query now this production production is basically the data set name so we'll come here and we will replace this okay next is the query the query parameter so uh, the query parameter is this that we will be passing query okay okay so our url is uh, ready next what we will do is uh, we will make a fetch api call and uh, uh, then we will try to uh, list the products with their price on the uh, on the html on the front end so so we'll start with it with uh, fetch and it will be the URL and I'll be using chaining as fetch returns a promise so uh, then 
uh, we have a response so we have to parse it so response dot json uh, now this is again a promise so we'll change it again then we have the uh, actually whenever we query it returns a result so we'll destructure result so that we get an array so that's what we'll do uh, here we have a result okay now uh, the result is uh, an array so we will go through it one uh, we'll iterate it but before that we'll just remove this uh, loading uh, over here you can see it's a span tag with id of loading so we'll just uh, remove it so let uh, loading element by id and uh, we already saw the id is loading next we want to remove it so we'll just re uh, do loading and uh, parent load dot uh, remove child loading so over here what we are doing is we have uh, we have access to loading uh, element so we are going to its parent node and from the parent node we are removing the child this is again the loading itself so this will remove it once we have a result in that case it will remove it and uh, then um, now uh, let's uh, get hold of this unordered list we'll capture this element we'll catch this element so it's uh, uh, products it is uh, document that dot uh, query selector and uh, because on our in our page we have only one uh, ul on unordered list so we'll just do with this okay so next is we have to uh, iterate through the result array so if uh, result dot length is greater than zero so in that case we will uh, go through each yeah each item in the result let's say that uh, because it's the products that are being uh, returned back so we'll just say product we'll just name it product okay so uh, yeah so for each product uh, we are iterating through each product and we need to put every product in, in a list item so we'll name we'll create a list item we'll name it item and we'll create a list item at the runtime with the document dot create element and the element has to be li element because it's a list item now this item uh, needs to have a text content uh, what we want uh, the text of this item to be so we'll just name it text uh, i mean we'll just update the text content now uh, what we are returning is a title and a price so over here you can see uh, we have title uh, directly accessible but for price you have to go inside the default product variant and then price so uh, let's do it we'll first print uh, the title so it is uh, because the product once again yeah so uh, this this is the product yeah this is the product so product uh, uh, dot sorry title okay and uh, we'll just create a small uh, it's just kind of a spacing to display the uh, price so we'll first display the title and then we need to display the price so over here it is product sorry product dot yeah default variant dot price now uh, this price over here we can see it does not have any uh, currency uh, no currency is being displayed so we'll just uh, maybe we can just display a dollar sign at the beginning yeah so this dollar is just a string okay uh, 
so uh, once this text content is updated now we have to put it in the unordered list now unordered list is this this is the product uh, products unordered list uh, we will append an L li element into the products list so we'll say append child and it is um, it is the item yeah so over here we'll go through it once again uh, we first create uh, got the project id the data set name and then the query uh, then we have wrapped it inside encode your i component which is available i think in all the browsers then we will build a url and uh, this url we simply took it from here and uh, we have pasted it here then we updated uh, the project id with the variable project id similarly uh, the data set because it can be any data set so, and the query whatever query we want to pass then we are calling this url using a fetch api which is again i think available in all the browsers or you can use some other like axios or anything else and uh, then we have uh, not then uh, because it's a promise we are uh, parsing it then we have the result uh, we are destructuring then we are removing the loading span tag and uh, we are capturing and then removing and then in the uh, we are capturing the unordered list uh, yeah we have it here and then we are checking for the result dot length if there is uh, any if there is any yeah yeah i was checking if it is result or results yeah fine so we are just checking if it has any content or not if it has then we will iterate through each item of the array and each item we are naming it as product and because every product that we are returning has a title and a price so we are at on at runtime we are creating an li element and we are updating the content with the title and the price and then we are just appending the li element into the products unordered list so now if i uh, just save it and if i just uh, refresh the page yeah so over here we can see we have uh, the products and we have the price so it looks like it is working so yeah so i think we are good uh, we have kitkat wasabi Make it get wasabi. So all the products have been displayed. So uh, thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can please put it in the comment section. Thank you.